Hey there! In this power-up, I will be showing you how to create custom flow functions. This allows you to define a series of flow functions into one custom flow function, which is saved and available for further use within your app. This is especially useful when you have a sequence of flow functions that get repeated multiple times in your app. Creating a custom flow function saves time in building your app and improves maintainability, as changes made to the custom flow function updates it in every page in your app where it is used. Here we have an app for filling in different lists. The user can fill in items to their shopping list as well as to their to-do list. The data resources shopping list and to-do list are already configured and have the schema item and ID. We have two data variables, shopping item and to-do item, and the input fields are bound to their item names. In the logic canvases, I have already defined that the add buttons create records to the correct resources with the right properties using our data variables. However, I would like to add input validation to our app. Before creating the record, I would like to make sure that the inputs are not empty and the input is at least over one characters. We can do this by adding two if flow functions before the shopping item record creation. We'll use the same flow at both buttons, so let's create a custom flow function of this sequence. Let's select the two if nodes and choose create new flow function at the sidebar to the right. You'll see our nodes combined into one green node, and it is now available in the by me section in the flow function library. Double clicking on the node enters an isolation mode where we can see the two if nodes and we can see how the outputs are configured. Next, we can define input arguments for our custom flow function. As we have two if nodes in our function, we'll want to be able to define the two different conditions. The new flow function by default has the input arguments of the first flow function from inside it. However, for our case, it would be convenient to be able to pass both if conditions as the input arguments to the new flow function. In isolation mode, let's select Edit Properties. Here we can define details such as name and description for our function, as well as the input arguments. Let's add a new property that can be bound to the condition for the second if function. We'll name it second condition and define it as true or false type. Still in isolation mode, we can now define which if node uses which condition. Clicking on the first node, let's select the binding type as flow function input and choose condition. For the second node, let's do the same and choose second condition. Now we have configured our flow function. Save your changes by overriding the local template in the advanced section. Exiting isolation mode, we can now see our two inputs in the sidebar to the right. First, we'll want to make sure our data variable shopping item is not empty, so let's add that to the formula to the first condition. Next, we'll want to check if the variable is over one character long. The formula would look like this. And now we're done for the shopping list. Doing the same for the to-do list, we can now drag our ready-to-use flow function from the library and add the same formulas to the conditions. Instead of using the variable shopping item, we'll use to-do item. And there we go! In our preview, we can now see that the items we write in our input fields get added to the list, while two short or empty inputs don't get added. I hope you enjoy this power-up and let's meet again soon!